Canada, Algonquin Provincial Park, a place I had longed to visit, with its dense long spanning forests of perpetual pines, sensational cedars, scintillating spruces and beautiful broadleafs, jeweled by clear waters, abound with wildlife. A dream to paddle the canoe in its original homeland, where it belongs, to fantasize its origins and reconnect with nature in this vast, unforgiving wilderness. The plan, a challenging adventure, 10 days traveling into the wilderness, covering over 100 kilometers, 16 lakes and two rivers, requiring 27 portages, but still leaving ample time for good laughs and experiencing its wildlife in this spectacular, unforgettable landscape. Before I even had a chance to film on the water, we were off it, and straight into our first portage. This would be the theme for much of our adventure, moving from lake to lake, or lake to river, or river to lake, or river to river. You get the idea. Right, hello and thanks for joining us. Uh, you're joining us on an epic adventure, this one. Uh, we've got 10 days of uh, canoeing and camping in uh, Canada, in Algonquin. Yeah, it's going to be quite a big one. So we've got 27 portages to do in total. <laughs> um, totaling 25 kilometres. So uh, quite a lot to get through. And we've got uh, 16 lakes and two rivers as well. So it should be good. Uh, joining me on this one is Matt from uh, Adventures Made. We've got Eze, Eze Adventurer. And uh, also Fred Cole as well. So uh, yeah, stick around. It should be uh, a really good one. After a dusty drive, we accessed the water at Magneto One Lake, taking a portage to Hamburg Lake, followed by two more portages to reach the beautiful Daisy Lake. Another portage took us onto the Petawawa, which had its own portage to reach Little Misty. A final portage of 880 meters will lead us onto Misty Lake, where we would be spending our first night. From camp, we will head north, portage into both Pandy and Pond, and again to Shah Lake, then a large 1,050 meter portage to the River Tim, camping on the first portage for a bit of fishing. The next morning, an early portage before a long and winding paddle down the wilderness that is the River Tim. Another portage at the end where it opens into Shippagoo Lake, a quick crossing and a final portage into the pristine Blue Lake for the night. Half asleep, another portage to Big Trout Lake to Camp 4, and spend two welcome nights, thankfully not portaging. A long paddle down Big Trout and White Trout Lake to reach the licentious grassy bay for a sunset and wildlife sensation. Heading across grassy bay to a, you guessed it, portage into the beaver paradise, McIntosh Creek. Then one more portage resting on an island in McIntosh Creek. Day 8, portage, Timberwolf Lake. The windy misty lake, 980 meter portage, Muslim Lake and a 370 portage to Winona Lake. Big one today, Portage, Bandit Lake, Portage, Moccasin Lake, Portage, Portage, back to the Petawawa. Two more carries onto Daisy Lake and back the way we came. Three more portages to where we started, then a bonus portage to Little Eagle for our final night for a portage back to the egress. It's so beautiful on it, it's something special on it. Just how dense the woodland is and just knowing that it doesn't just stop like a few hundred meters behind the, the locker hedge, it just keeps on going and going. Infinite. It's just so quiet here. Just every noise you make as well, it just reflected straight back at you by the dense trees. 
Um, it's just, there's no room <laughs> in between the trees for the sound to filter. It's just, it comes straight back at you. The weather on the first day was perfect and lunchtime came quick. So we got the fire started for noodles and tea. But not before a quick start. <laughs> Portage number five, I think. Just got one left to do today, and then we'll be in camp. Fortunately, the last one is the biggest one as well. It's quite a lot of hair, huh? Is it warm? You gotta to touch it, <laughs> but to feel accurate test, you have to do it with your tongue. Taste test. <laughs> Taste test. We've just come onto the Petawawa, but um, there is not a lot of water in it. Just missing the, just missing the riverbed as I go down. Loads of little fish though, and dragonfly. We paddled carefully and peacefully down the Petawawa River in the hope of seeing more wildlife. A moose perhaps, or a beaver as we passed their handiwork.
Ah, happy to see your face, Fred. is amazing down this little stretch of river. Proper wilderness. So peaceful as well. Easy peasy. Right, so our final portage of the day. It's quite a biggie, at nearly 900 meters. And I think it's our sixth one. It's getting quite dark really now, so the sun's about to go down soon. So it'd be nice to be in camp now, but there we go, have to press on. Um, I'm not gonna have a lot of time when I get into camp, so probably not gonna do a lot of filming. <laughs> gonna get set up as quickly as possible, get a fire going, get some food on before we lose too much light. Right, so we made it onto Misty Lake just before sunset or as the sun sets. Gonna get into camp, get some food sorted, get the shelter done, get some get the fire on the go as quickly as possible really. We've pushed ourselves today, but we have made it and uh, feeling tired because it's probably about one or two in the morning uh, back home. We only got here yesterday. <laughs> But this lake is looking absolutely beautiful in the in the sunset and the reflections, frogs croaking away. Beautiful. We woke to the sounds of nature, to gentle patter of rain, frogs chirping, and the unmistakably eerie but soothing sounds of the loon. On the aptly named Misty Lake. Right, good morning everyone. Had a beautiful introduction. Uh, to Canada yesterday with brilliant weather and some really nice wildlife to see as well and some beautiful sections of lakes as well as river um, yeah, it was really nice but got in camp quite late yesterday and as the sun started to fade so quickly got the tarp and the hammock up and cooked some nice food 
and then uh, yeah, went to bed, so I didn't get a lot of filming done last night. But uh, yes, yeah, in the morning now it's raining. We've got rain forecast the next three days, uh, so it should be quite interesting. But yeah, I'm gonna get a coffee on now, get some porridge on, and then uh, soon we'll be back out in the water. If there is any better feeling than stepping out of bed and straight into a canoe, already fully immersed in nature, then I know not of it. And so we headed further and deeper into the wilderness. Man, it's a beautiful morning out here today. The rain stopped, just a little bit of mist on the water. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> right, so we've got our first portage of the day coming up, which will take us from where we are now, Misty Lake, onto Pandion Lake. It's a, let's have a look at the map, 700 metre portage, and then we've got um, a very short paddle across Pandion Lake, and then there's another portage which takes us onto Shah Lake, and then we've got another big portage which is 1,050. Uh, meters which will take us on to the River Tim so uh, yeah, that's where we're going to be stopping somewhere on there tonight so as long as the weather stays like this uh, should be a good day but there's quite a bit of walking to do <laughs> it's quite a lot of moose poo and moose tracks along here uh, keep seeing. Still not seeing a moose though. It would be nice, but maybe not. I've got a canoe on my head. <laughs> oh, he's a slippery. We're nearly there. God, seem to go up over this one. You can see the lake. Just one last little descent to do. Pandian Lake. It's never looked so good. <laughs> Something has had an absolute feast here. Right, so here we are, Pandian Pond. Short paddle now, and then another portage <laughs> onto Shah Lake. Well, that lake <laughs> or pond was not long enough, and we're back on a portage already. Um, each of these portages we do, we end up walking three times. So we've got to walk over there uh, with some of our equipment, and then we go back and fetch the canoe and the rest of our equipment. So even though I think it's only a thousand meters, it works out being three kilometers in total. It's all part of the game. Here we are, Shah Lake. <laughs> right, so this bit of the portage is the nice bit when you're not carrying anything. Walking back to get your canoe. Uh, it gives you a chance just to soak up nature and have a little look around as well and actually see what's going on. Hi, Jake. Hey. Oh, 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 oh. Glad to see you here. And then, of course, there's the canoe carry. <laughs> One more done. Yay. Here we go again. This is the biggie. Wow, so this is a beautiful portage. You've got some amazing colours and uh, diverse as well, really diverse. Saw some lion's mane, so that was really good. Keep getting really strong whiffs of animal. <laughs> and there's bears out here and wolves as well. Uh, you're not really supposed to go for it too quietly. You have to go for it making a bit of noise, you know. You don't want to creep up 
on a bear or even probably more worryingly a moose to be honest here you don't want that there's a moose print bear has been here narrow very narrow i suppose i better go back for the canoe ah <sighs> done about 10 meters and i'm already feeling it <laughs> Goes on and on and on. A thousand meters never seem to fail. Ah, I can see the end. <laughs> yes, not a moment too soon. Time for some lunch. Done. Time to hit the water. It's actually a little bit eerie <laughs> navigating down this tiny little narrow waterway right out in the middle of nowhere. You never know what's around the next bend. stretch of river down either side full of older trees just where the beavers have been um, eating the bark and then uh, they plant twigs uh, back in the ground and it grows and end up creating their own little habitat uh, but there's evidence of them everywhere scratch marks up the bank and flattened bits of grass when they come in and out but I really want to see one <laughs> I haven't seen a beaver yet it's so much activity but no beaver Need some running water. I'm not sure if it's a rapid or just a dam. Yeah, it's a portage. Ah, it's all raspberries, all wild raspberries, all the way along here. Those of them. So we're just setting up camp at the top there. I'll show you later. I'm gonna go down here for a fish. <laughs> just means navigating this water. Try to get to there, I reckon. Be nice and aerated, hopefully. I mean, it looks pretty fishy to me. Not gonna make much of a meal. First brook trout, look at him, look. Oh, lovely. Oh, I had another one straight away as well. Tried to pick up the camera and lost it. All right, you're gonna have to put up some grass. They're biting. Just need their mum and dad, that's all they need. I think my little nibble nearly every cast. There's obviously loads at the bottom of this river here. Ooh, fresh water, oxygenated. Oh, ah, really? oh. <laughs> oxygenated. And uh, yeah, obviously they like it. Oh, we're on. Oh, that's a bit better. Ah, oh, that's a better fish. Oh, 
skills, mate. Got a big one on. Well, fairly decent size. Set the drag. I walked down from the camp. Walked down the river. This one might be an eat. Oh no! No, he's off! Ah! He's got away! Oh, he's a squiggly one. Not sure what he is. Oh, oh he's gone. Got him. There he is. He's not a bad size. As I've been busy whilst I've been out enjoying myself fishing, done us an awesome little setup. And <laughs> nicely chopped down here for a beaver. Alright, so we're in our campsite for the night, got the hammock and tarp set up and um, the trees are really close together, it's giving the hammock a bit more of a banana shape than I'd like which isn't really great for a good night's sleep but um, I might have a blare of it later but I think it's probably about as best I could do a bit limited for space here so I'm um, going to get a fire going in a minute and there'll be time to get cooking We prepped for the fire, and with some fresh veg and soy, I cooked up my black bean beetroot noodle stir fry. And to top it off, Eze had a beauty of a trout, which we shared around the fire. Oh, I'll try this little bit here. Oh. Alright, good morning. I had a pretty decent night's sleep last night. To get woke up by an air horn and um, Fred heard something rustling, something big near his tent so he sounded that to scare it off. Uh, there's lots of bears scattered around where we are so um, yeah but I'm up nice and early this morning I'm just wading down the river here. Uh, we're gonna see if we can catch some more brook trout. Oh fish? <laughs> you got a fish? Yeah, <laughs> very tiny one. What is it? Oh, oh no! He's, oh, yeah. He's gone! <laughs> He's on note. Like the last second. Nice colouring though. No? Well, caught a few little fish. Yeah, nothing, nothing particularly big, but now we're going to wade our way back. So this is where we're camped tonight. We're just about to head off back onto the Tim River. We're going to keep paddling down here. We've got a 400 meter portage. We're going to follow the river all the way down. It's going to take a few hours. And then we've got another portage here. And then eventually we're going to come out in Shippagoo Lake. And then we have one more portage, which is quite a large one, 890 into Blue Lake. And that's where we're staying tonight. There's only one campsite on Blue Lake, so we're guaranteed to have it to ourselves.
day three, and we were settling into the daily routine of portage and paddling. Constantly moving through the dense wilderness. Completely removed from the familiar way of life, yet somehow it felt normal. Perhaps even feeling a little closer to how life should be. Right, here we go again. Oh. 400 metres this one, so, so not too bad compared to what we had yesterday. The Tim River was an untamed but beautiful place, untouched and lost in time. Tranquil in nature, but flourishing in life, with its overgrown alder and grass-lined banks. Overlooked by spruces, cedars and pines, dappled with broadleaf autumnal colours. And so we fished and drifted down peacefully, absorbing it as it drawed us in further. Nature filled our lungs, our blood, and then the heart. It has a way of resetting the soul. Time passes quickly where it has little relevance, and midday came fast. And so we moored up for lunch and a coffee. Right, so we just pulled over there for a spot of lunch, a cup of coffee and some uh, cheese and oat cakes for me. Now we've got quite a bit of river still to do today, so we don't want to fool ourselves into thinking we've got lots of time. So uh, we might have to speed up a little bit because we've been really taking our time on this first section. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully get down to the campsite in a good time today. Help. Beautiful. So the uh, river's widened out a bit now. We've got these grassy banks that go back all the way to these uh, the tree line and the sort of bare tree trunks. And then behind that you've just got more trees and some hills as well, topped with uh, some of the autumnal colours as we approach uh, October. You know, it's a very uh, lonely feeling place now, you know. <laughs> There's just so much of it and you're just making your way through it. It's kind of overwhelming in some ways, you know? nothing compared to anything we've got back in the UK. So the uh, grasslands either side have come in and now we've just got trees and rocks on the side. Uh, it's completely transformed the, the landscape. Ha <laughs> ha, so close. Ha <laughs> oh, ha, so close.
So we're just coming up on the portage. Second from last portage of the day, if we make it to Blue Lake. This one's only a short one. And then we have a big one onto Blue Lake. But um, time is not on our side anymore. <laughs> So we just carried our stuff down the portage and then realised it's actually, actually quite runnable. That was an epic river journey. <laughs> Been on it for hours and it changed scenery so much, but absolutely beautiful. Um, proper wilderness. But now um, we're just about to come out on Shippaku Lake. Uh, it looks quite windy out there. I've got a quick crossing and then uh, onto a big portage and then onto a small lake, which is called Blue Lake, which is where we're staying tonight. So uh, it shouldn't be too long now until we're in camp. And on the portage again, um, 990 meters. This one, so it's quite a long one. Um, take my bags first, and then I'll head back in a minute to go fetch my canoe. You can just see some water now poking through the trees, <laughs> and we've made it to Blue Lake. Well, there, yeah. yeah, you're at least halfway, mate. At least halfway. <laughs> yeah, no, you're just around the corner. <laughs> How far to go, bud? You're a good halfway, mate. What? No, come on. <laughs> just around the corner. Is it? <laughs> that joke doesn't get old. <laughs> <laughs> halfway, man. Yeah, pretty much there. I'm dying. Thanks, bud. Two minutes, you'll be there, mate. size of that bell. Ah, time for the canoe. Ah, man, this is such a long one. <laughs> it's tough, tough at the end of a day. You have to be so careful, you know. You can't really afford to lose concentration. You know? Twist an ankle out here. I don't know what you do, you know. You've got a long way to get back, and you're going to be carrying your canoe and all your equipment. So, uh, yeah, just keep your wits about you for sure. So inviting right now. Done. I'm first. I make the change. <laughs> Might go out here and have a few casts of the old rod whilst I wait for the others. I can't believe we've got this whole lake to ourselves. The whole lake. <laughs> That's just crazy. Took some getting to though. It's absolutely perfect on here. The sun's come out just as we come on here and the wind's died down. We heard thunder earlier, so we was expecting rain by the time we got here. But it's turned out to be the opposite. And uh, it's been a hard day and a sweaty day, and I think a dip is definitely in order. <laughs>
What's that thing that ruining my shot? <laughs> yeah, it's a worm. I thought it was a stick. That was the water. <laughs> ah, I think it's colder than the other one. <laughs> Where's that sun? There, yeah, somewhere. There's the sun. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's come over here and stick the feet up on the sand. Yeah. Keep the feet out. What was I going to do it with one hand? I can't do it with one hand. <laughs> right, hold on. Monkey feet as well. It's not going to be very long. Every evening we have the fun task of trying to hang our food beyond the reach of bears. Okay. Despite trees being everywhere, it is surprisingly difficult to locate a Goldilocks branch. <laughs> you gotta go there, right? Okay. And sometimes, even harder to get the rope over. <laughs> so close, dude! Time to get that branch. Oh, so close. Okay. Whoa, that was rubbish, mate. <laughs> so I've never uh, thrown a throwback before. I'm going to try first time. If I get this, it will be very embarrassing for balls. It's a hard shot, mate. And, uh, it's the angle, isn't it? It is a hard shot. In there, okay. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the intended branch. But if but that you, breaks, you could... you're, you're, you're still good, basically. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just going to land on the other one, isn't it? As I got it. <laughs> I'm never going to hear the end of this. <laughs> I mean, did, technically, you didn't get the right branch. You got the one above it, but it was well, dead. Technically, so I, we pulled I, it. It I ended up you, on the right branch. I got you exactly where you wanted to be. After letting Eze win the competition, it was time to set up camp. So we've got a beautiful campsite on a beautiful lake. There's the hammock and tarp set up, the bear barrels in the tree, thanks to Eze. And uh, I'm guessing next we're going to get a fire on and start to cook. What have you got to for your tea tonight, Matt? So I'm just doing a bit of garlic bread and I'm going to um, boil some water for a dehydrated uh, chilli meal as well. Right, tea done. I'm going to make myself a hot chocolate with a bit of whiskey in it and then it'll be time to say goodnight. Good morning. It was a brilliant night's sleep last night. 
Um, we got here last night, we had the fire going, cooked up some uh, pasta bolognese, that was really good. And then we uh, sat around the campfire chatting uh, until that burned out. Uh, woke up this morning, it was a pit of patter of raindrops, uh, but what a place to wake up. And now I've just got a coffee on the go and I'm going to cook up some pancakes. about eight pancakes by the end of this. I'll tell you what, this lemon is gonna be lovely. I think I'm craving this lemon more than I am the pancake. I've never seen it a lemony looking lemon. Keep the lemon. I might do, yeah. <laughs> it just looks so lemony. Oh man, that is proper naughty. <laughs> that is good, man. Cheers, dude. Mm, good stuff, eh? Okay, Don't eat with time. a knife. Don't do this at home, kids. <laughs> Right, so breakfast is done. It was nice, a little bit too much to be honest. But uh, we're all packed down, we're all back on the water, and now we're just crossing Blue Lake here. And um, we've got a portage fairly quickly, and that'll take us onto Big Trout Lake, uh, where we'll be spending the night. So it's a nice, easy day for us today, as far as tripping goes. Uh, it gives us time to relax and just uh, chill out a little bit and camp after the last couple of days of just uh, being quite fast paced and uh, heavy going. So definitely looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, we made it. Just heard something massive crashing through the woods by me there. Abandoned canoe here. Twin seater, look. We could save ourselves some time oh, that's here. That's nice, buddy. You want to tandem the rest of the trip? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. That'd be sick, man. Let's <laughs> take it back. Nah, this is the one you loaned us.
So I think this one was around about the 900 meter mark, this portage, but it's the warmest one I've had yet. <laughs> Sweating, but I can see the lake through the trees and I'm nearly there. Hot stuff coming through. Hot. <laughs> That's the warmest one yet, that. We arrived at a big lagoon on the east side of Big Trout Lake. It was to be our home for the next two nights and a chance to relax. We stood there, admired the view and listened to the sounds of nature. It was the perfect opportunity to cool down. So we made it to Big Trout Lake. It is big <laughs> and it's beautiful as well. Got some uh, hills there right off in the distance all covered in mist. Very peaceful, just frogs chirping away. It's beautiful, yeah, and it marks quite a good milestone as well on our journey. You know, sort of from here onwards, um, we'll be heading back, although we're not probably halfway distance wise. Um, it's as far into the park as we go. Yeah, it's absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Right, just going to check out this little campsite here. Oh, you made yourself comfy. Look at that. Look. That's posh, this, isn't it? Posh, isn't it? The only thing is it's exposed. Yeah. Right, so that was a beautiful little campsite. It was a little bit exposed to the wind. So we're gonna head back to one that we've seen uh, a little bit earlier and get set up for the rest of the day. Wow, beautiful loon there. Making that classic call that everyone, uh, well everyone back in the UK certainly relates to what they see being out here in Canada and yeah, beautiful looking birds
Right, so I've got the hammock and tarp set up. Yeah, it's quite early, so it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm just gonna make myself a little bite to eat and then uh, go for a little explore, maybe, just uh, see what's about. Right, so I've just taken myself away from the group, um, just around the corner on this little island that we're staying on. Just gonna relax and listen to the noises, the birds and the bees, the fish jumping out, uh, the squirrels. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just scan the horizon, see if there's any wildlife out there. And just relax, absorb nature, appreciate where I am for a little while, and uh, basically chill out. <laughs> That's what it's all about, really. The last few days have been quite manic, so um, having this extra time is a real good uh, blessing really, I guess. Getting some firewood, we found a dead standing one. Nice one, man. Perfect. Nice. That'll do it for tonight, that. Yeah, definitely. That's enough. Everyone knows the saying that making a fire warms you up twice. Once collecting and preparing the materials, and secondly, the fire itself. So we decided to use the first as an excuse to have a swim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sludgy. That's like 100 years of old. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting, man. Nicely chilled by the water, we decided to continue to saw the wood. Hmm? But nobody wants to see that. <laughs> Put some gloves on our one, man. Right, so tonight I'm going to rehydrate some veg. I'm going to mix up with some soy mints some tomato, and a bit of shepherd's pie mix, uh, some leftover onion and broccoli, and a bit of stock cube. The day was coming to an end, but Algonquin wasn't finished with us yet and had a couple of surprises for us. We headed off for one last paddle and were greeted by the soothing sounds of the loon. Far away, we could see a storm cloud. We watched the distant sky light up as it threw down bolts of lightning and decided it was time to head back to camp. Right, so I'm in bed. The loons are going crazy out there. Um, it was a really nice paddle actually. Had a bit of a lightning storm in front of us. We never got to where we were, so that's good. And yeah, but I'll see you in the morning. Day five, the rest day. It was a wet one, and the rain turned itself on and off all day.
The idea, a chance to recover from all the portaging, paddling, the setting up and taking down of camp. A chance to enjoy the peace, the pace and the place. Often the best chance of seeing wildlife is to chill and let it come to you. It's amazing what you might just see lying around. Yeah, because even yeah. this stuff's soaking wet. Yeah. So tonight I have some satay noodles with some mushroom and some soya balls for added protein. Oh yeah! A rest day well earned, and to be honest, even the camera took a bit of a back seat. But I had my suspicions, the next days were going to be special, and I'm about to be proved right. Day six, off to Grassy Bay, in case you can't read. The morning sky had a promising yellow glow, but still feeling a little uneasy, as if recovering from yesterday's storm. We sat and watched at breakfast, pondering what the day may have in store for us. So we're doing a gas test here, which has got the most in it. Sink in the gas canister in the water. The water line indicates exactly how much is left in the gas canister. I'm winning. <laughs> right, right, so that's it, we're all packed down. Um, had a nice breakfast, pancakes and coffee. And now we're gonna progress down Big Trout Lake uh, for the day. Do a bit of troll on the way, hopefully catch a fish, although well, the fishing hasn't been uh, very successful on the lakes so far. Right, so we just passed through this beautiful little corridor here. Uh, it's 
we leave Big Trout and uh, make our way to White Trout Lake. It's been a beautiful place to uh, spend the last couple of days. But unfortunately, it is time for us to move on. But yeah, I've got a feeling there's still some real good bits to come though. So it's another spectacular lake. Um, some of the autumnal colours are starting to come through now as well, which is really, really beautiful. We just come up on this little island on White Trout Lake. We're probably going to stop, have some lunch, and uh, look, have a look at the map. But yeah, it looks like there's some beautiful views. Right, so that's lunch done. Got to see a chipmunk. Even got to feed him out of my hands, so it's quite nice. <laughs> and now we're going to push on uh, down into Grassy Bay. Hopefully, there's a good chance of seeing some moose down there. Uh, we haven't had much luck so far, but uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Oh no, I just saw him. Poor little fella. Hello. There's plenty of places to get out of the front. Right, good evening. So here we are. We're on a grassy bay. It's an absolutely beautiful campsite. Um, we've got grasslands all the way around this uh, little lake here. So hopefully if there's any chance of seeing a moose coming out, uh, it's here. Um, it's so, so beautiful. We've got birds chirping. We've got frogs croaking. 
uh, a moose would definitely finish off, uh, you know, finish it off perfectly. Um, yeah, so we just got into camp. I've got the tarp set up. Um, I've got my stuff laying out. It's just trying to get rid of some of the damp that's accumulated over the last couple of days. And uh, shortly we'll be cooking up some food. I'm just gonna have something simple tonight, just a dehydrated meal, because I'm really eager to get out on the water uh, for sunset, do a bit of fishing, and uh, hopefully get some more nice pictures as well. It's really nice with the water reflecting um, on top of the water with the lilies. Uh, hopefully we'll get a few colors tonight. Uh, it'll make the evening just absolutely perfect. <laughs> We paddled out onto the lake as the sun began to set. There are some standout moments in life that are simply unforgettable. We lingered on the water, painted by the sky's blazing fiery colours of orange, red and gold. I was humbled by the beauty and magnitude, lost deep in nature in the middle of this vast wilderness. So it's pretty special. I guess it's time to head back in now, get the fire lit. That evening, as the light smouldered away, we lit the fire. It glowed as much as we did, sitting, conversing and watching nature's television. And beneath the star-filled sky, we toasted our toes on the reassuring warmth of the fire. Ah, nothing like drying your feet on the fire, eh? You can't actually see their feet, can you? A bit of head torch, but not too much head torch. Yeah. No, no head torch. Just no. a little bit tiny. It's subtle, man. It's subtle. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then go. Ah, nothing like. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> ah, it's drying the feet. <laughs> She's laughing at earlier. Ah, on, nothing like <laughs> drying your feet on the fire, eh? What? Ah, nothing like drying your feet on the fire, eh? <laughs> cool. Ah, nothing like... No, 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 no. Okay, I got this.
All right, so we're back on the water. Breakfast done, everything's been collapsed. Um, what a beautiful campsite that was. Uh, lovely this morning, with the sunrise and the otters out on the water. Uh, so we've got about a four kilometer paddle now until we reach uh, McIntosh Creek where we'll have a portage and then we continue down the creek for another portage before eventually uh, reaching McIntosh uh, Lake which is where we're going to spend the night. So many beaver dams. <laughs> Wow, that's a biggie. Impressive how a little creature or a couple of little creatures can build such a thing. And so well constructed as well. Right, first portage of the day. One of only two, this being the bigger one. Just there, uh, alongside of this little creek here, which is quite pretty, but I could see why well, you wouldn't want to paddle a bit. <laughs> Oops, slip then. Don't know if you can hear that. Uh, there's a thunderstorm coming and uh, just felt some rain. <laughs> Brilliant. Spate my nails. Right, quick lunch. Now we're back on McIntosh Creek. Only one portage left. So another portage, last one for the day. We are uh, just coming up McIntosh Creek there to this portage and spotted a moose. Uh, absolutely huge. Uh, didn't get a great shot of it. I think it's probably pretty shaky because I was um, standing up on the canoe being blown by the wind and a little bit of flow as well from, from a beaver dam that I was trying to support myself on. But yeah, wow, amazing. The size of the thing, the antlers. I mean, what I think probably when I got the video footage of him, he was in the water. So all I could really see was probably about half his body, but even so, massive. Mm. 
made it to Macintosh Lake, our final resting place for today. But it's looking pretty gnarly out there. Oh, the wind. We're gonna have to make this crossing. It's not ideal. Uh, we don't really have a choice. Um, the wind's the same tomorrow as it is today. And uh, we've got to get across this lake one way or another. So yeah, we're gonna push on. Right, so we made the crossing and we found this beautiful little campsite. Look at this. Brilliant, right in the middle of the lake. Yeah, we'll get set up soon. We'll get the hammock up. I think I'm probably going to go up. There's a little hill up here. Um, even though it's elevated, it does feel more sheltered. Right, the skies have gone dark. And uh, I can hear thunder, so I'm going to get the tarp up. Right quick. The tarp is up. Just started to pit a battle with rain. Uh, so at least now I'm under here and I can put everything up while staying relatively dry, so that's good. Got a nice view as well. Uh, well, broken view by the trees, but I can see the lake. So uh, yeah, it's nice. More importantly, I'm in a bit of an elevated position so I can lord it over everybody else. <laughs> Just checking in with the missus, let her know that I'm all right. Of course I'm all right. Hear some thunder in the distance just waiting for that to uh pass overhead and then we're gonna have a little swim oh. yeah. ah. Ooh. 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 that was chilly <sighs> looks like there's a thunder cloud coming over so i <laughs> didn't want to be out there any longer right time to get the barrel up it needs to be at least eight foot off the ground six foot down from the branch and six foot out from the tree. Got my throw back here. I doubt I'll get it first time somehow. But I'm going for that one up there. It looks pretty strong. Right, tonight I'm gonna have some uh, mushroom bolognese. So I'm using this pasta and sauce one, which I'm going to bulk out with some soy mix here, and then uh, some dried tomato, some forest mushrooms, a little bit of this uh, spaghetti bolognese mix, and then there's some great cheese on it. Oh, and I've also got a tiny little bit of onion left over, so I may as well use that. Day 8, and we woke on an island in the middle of McIntosh Lake. It was a windy one and a bit chilly. And so I warmed my outsides with a fire, and my insides with a fresh coffee and pancakes. Right, good morning. So uh, didn't do a lot of filming last night after I ate, but um, we sort of sat down by the, laid down at the corner of the island there and stars came out in the Milky Way. It was amazing. We had a thunderstorm in the, in the distance and it was flashing. Uh, it was a really nice night. I'm just packing away at the moment. So the wind changed direction last night. Uh, it was coming from this direction right behind me and it changes now in my face. Uh, now, as we speak, uh, it did get a bit chillier because I was a little bit more exposed on this side in the hammock. But it's really good for our journey because it means we're heading off that way. So we won't have a headwind, uh, at least when we set off this morning. So that's good. But it does feel like it could rain at any second. So I'm going to get this stuff away uh, as quickly as I can. It's really important to look after your feet on a trip like this. And this stuff here is class for it. Right, 
Anyway, so we've left camp. It's a bit cold and a bit windy. Um, shouldn't be too bad when I get to this little island here. I'll be in the lee, the island. And then once we get to the end of this lake, we'll have a portage to do. So we made it onto Timberwolf Lake, but it's a bit windy and a bit wet. Uh, we've got to paddle right across the lake to the other side, and then we've got a small narrow bit, almost river, uh, to bring us back onto Misty Lake where we was a few days ago. And then we're on that briefly, and then we have another small portage to take us onto Muslin Lake, where we haven't been as yet. Quite a brief downpour, but there's a little bit of blue sky behind it, which is nice. It's really bringing out the colours as well on top of all the uh, trees. Right, so we're now leaving Timberwolf Lake, and we're entering this little channel, which will take us back onto Misty Lake, where we were a couple of days ago. Scan the grassland here. You know, we're a little bit loose. I was trying not to get blown into the water. and coffee what are you doing there are they just I'm, I'm doing a, a coffee with the little water that you left me a spoon is not the thing for noodles is it <laughs> too much time in the back country mate yeah, so. it's too much time spent with you is what it is and get your manners back before you go back to the Macy's okay. oh, <laughs> <laughs> you dropped Back on Misty Lake, apologies for the wind noise, hence the double paddle as well. Um, just had a little lunch break then, uh, it was really nice. <laughs> just sit there chatting, enjoying the sun, suddenly the rain came back. Um, it's not really raining much at the moment, but it is quite overcast. So we was on this one, this is where we stayed on the first night. And uh, we're just shortly hopping back onto it to find another portage to get back off. So we're not going down the same route. Uh, we did on the way here, just mix it up a little bit and keep it a bit more interesting. It seems to be a temporary lull in the wind, which is nice. The trees here are so beautiful, I know I keep saying it. But, um, quite hard to comprehend, you know, compared to England, you, you know, you've got some really pretty lots and lakes, but um, 
you know the trees around the outside can look really nice but they, they kind of finish not far after you know looking that way uh, north you know it just goes on for hundreds of miles <laughs> it's kind of like it's too much for my english brain to comprehend bit of a scary moment then <laughs> I was playing around with stuff in my boat and uh, the wind came up and just got me a sudden gust the same time as the wave got me pretty bad timing wasn't got that close to going in but uh, yeah it did make my heart stop a little bit didn't want to fancy having a swim out in the middle of that lake uh, whilst that's kicking up like that would have been bad here we go we've made it to the portage made it Muslim Lake it's a beautiful looking lake as well right so portage done it's quite a biggie that about a thousand meters now we've got about a 600 700 meter paddle across Muslim Lake here and then we've got a 370 meter portage that makes us to Winona Lake where we're going to be staying tonight made it, we're in a lake, this is where we'll be stopping for the night. Fish and notices it dive down through a fish and uh, managed to get reasonably close and um, to get a little bit of video footage of him before he flew off. Yeah, lovely. Such a peaceful little lake that we've ended up on today. It's going to be a, a nice evening. <laughs> right, got the hammock and tarp set up. Um, it could be quite a chilly one tonight. We're looking at uh, temperature about one to down to zero degrees tonight. Uh, got the kettle on the go. Gonna make myself a nice freeze dried meal, and uh, hopefully we'll get a nice sunset tonight. With squirrels chattering, we were once again honoured by a full-bodied rosé sky. And as the light faded, we now appreciated it more than ever, knowing our adventure would soon be coming to an end. And with a sound drop of the white-throated sparrow, we once again had the warming company of Nature's TV.
Right, it was quite a chilly one last night, but we're up nice and early on the water. Nice, got the sun coming up and a bit of mist on the water. We've got a big day ahead of us today. Got 10 portages to do, seven lakes and a river. So uh, we need to get cracking and get on uh, as far as we can today to leave us in good stead for the morning. Right, let's do it. Man, what a glorious morning. So glad it's not windy and raining like yesterday. <laughs> that would have made it a miserable day. Elegant as always. Portage number one. 540 meters this one. Into Bandit Lake. Luckily, a bit of camera trickery. Made it. One down, nine to go. Size number two today, 440 into Moccasin Lake. Number four, here we go. Right, so 800 kilometers, this is our biggest portage of the day. Uh, good to get out of the way. And then at the end of it, we'll be on the Petawawa River. Uh, again, where we came down earlier. Uh, I really enjoyed that little section. So it'd be nice to see it again. Hopefully you never know, see a moose. <laughs> Although I keep saying that, we have seen one, but uh, I am hoping still for more. There's a little bit of a walkway here. But it's like ice, absolutely deadly. I think I'd prefer it if it wasn't here, to be honest. Made it. Oh my God, no end. Grab myself a little beaver stick, a little nose all the way around. I've got one from Sweden and one from Florida, and now I've got one from Canada. <laughs> I love we got little teeth marks all the way around it, and you can see where he's gnawed it on the end. Portage done, and straight into another beaver dam. Portage number six. This one bypasses a lovely cascade of water. The colours of autumn are starting to show. Some of the trees are starting to turn red. It's a really beautiful spot. So it seems like the perfect place to sit down at the end of this portage and grab some lunch. Some 
lunch here, some coffee, some nine day old cheese. Started off as mature and now it's vintage. <laughs> Right, lunch is done. The sun has come out. It's a glorious day as we enter Daisy Lake now. We've got about a four kilometer paddle ahead of us. So it'd be nice rather than doing all the pond hopping in and out, in and out. Nice little stretch of paddling. So yeah, I keep saying it, but it's another beautiful lake. So we're approaching the end of Daisy Lake now and then we're just going to pass these little beaver dams and we're going to come up with another portage, 440 metres, which will take us onto Hambone Lake. Cold? Yeah. I've lost count now. <laughs> it's either portage seven or eight. So that was Portage 7, this is Portage 8. But I've just seen Fred go down here. I think it's a log jam. But if he's gonna go down here, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna go down here. Ah, I got through, wasn't that bad really. Definitely not a portage, just a few uh, big rocks and a few logs in the way. Definitely sped things up a little bit. Right, the penultimate portage. <laughs> Everybody's left me, they've already gone through. <laughs> I was too busy uh, videoing ducks and reflections on rocks. Magna Tawan Lake, where it all began. This is where our access point is and also our egress point. Um, we're not getting out just yet though. We're gonna move to a lake just south of here called Eagle Lake or Little Eagle Lake, I believe. And we're gonna stay there tonight because that'll give us good stead in the morning and to catch our flight tomorrow. So the final portage of the day. We've done really well actually. Um, I think we've got around pretty quick as well as enjoying it as well and having a bit of time to relax and seeing a bit of wildlife. Yeah, it was a good balance, but we had to get around and we've made it. So the last portage of the day done. Yeah, kind of mixed emotions really because it's our last night tonight. I know the next time we do a portage it'll be that one back to our access point and our flight home. Obviously I'm looking forward to seeing the wife and the little kid but it's been a magical experience. You know I've been here with uh, three guys you know it's ne never an easy task really sleeping, eating and traveling with uh, three strangers that you hardly know and we've all got on pretty well. Uh, we've seen, had awesome wildlife, we've seen moose, We've seen eagles, we've seen the classic loon and hearing his calls. We've had chipmunks come up and say hello. We've had red squirrels. Um, 
caterpillars. <laughs> Some beautiful brook trout, kingfisher, all manner of things, many of which we couldn't even capture on camera. A few mink, one which was running around my hammock, didn't capture on camera. And else had something in the, in the night, I don't know what it was, it's a mouse <laughs> that ran across my face when I was in the hammock. But yeah, it's a truly amazing place, you know, and the, the scale and the magnitude of it here. And now it's turned into autumn, the colours are just incredible, you know, it makes you grateful to be alive and what an amazing, diverse and interesting planet we live on. But we're going to get in camp now and we're going to set up, imagine we'll have a fire, probably have a swim, otherwise the person on the seat next to me in the plane is not going to be very grateful. <laughs> it's been an absolutely amazing journey, you know, spent with amazing people, had an amazing time and seen some amazing things. <laughs> what a risk of bear coming to <laughs> Not sharing a tent with you anymore, man. I mean, no, no, no. those thoughts, man. No, those thoughts and those feet. It was our last day, our final morning, and it didn't disappoint. The sun rose over the treetops and seared through the morning mist reflected upon the pristine water. Algonquin had been all I'd hoped for, beautiful, wild, picturesque and unspoiled. Ten days reconnecting with nature had given me a much needed dose of perspective, a gratitude and a deeper appreciation of all things. Packed up, we set off for the final time leaving our campsite behind in the mist. I was sad it had come to an end, but happy to be going home. My soul cleansed from being immersed in somewhere so raw, honest and far greater than myself. sunrise this morning with the mist on the water it's absolutely beautiful and the perfect way to end the trip uh, we're all packed down now and we're making our way back to the egress point um, it's been a super emotional humbling journey you know and a big eye opener um, it's such a wonderful spectacular place so hopefully you got some idea of the trip it's very hard to capture the beauty 
um, out here on camera. Hopefully I did it some sort of justice. Um, yeah, but until the next adventure, I'll see you then. Satisfied, a relief from the itch to return to the wild had been scratched. But it is infectious, and it is under my skin, and the scratch offered only temporary relief, for I knew the itch would soon return.